you talk about police states like some Gestapo. I believe in minimal government. I do believe in Once, locally. But Randy, I got a question for you. Logically, okay. Sure. This is going to be a little a little mind game. So once you've given a institution, a socialist institution, which is what all government is, the monopoly of the use of force without equal recourse for all of us mundane slaves, then how is it supposed to be restrained? How, in, By what means could you ever restrain the size of, of a government that's been given a monopoly on the use of force, which is by definition what government is? Well, that's what the Second Amendment is. is. Has it worked? Oh well, it's, it's, Lysander Spooner has an essay. It's called "It's Called No Trees in the Constitution of No Authority," and he says either the Constitution authorizes everything that exists today, or it was powerless to, res to prevent it from happening. Either way, it is unfit to exist. He wrote that over a hundred years ago, and so we've come. He wrote that like 140 years ago. So we've come 140 years since, and it's only gotten worse because he was right back then, and he's right today. If you give an institution the monopoly of the use of force, there is nothing, there's no logical restraint on that use of force. And it's, oh, you know, maybe we'll elect great men, but at the very best, like Robert Laferve says, you'll elect men of, of, you know, on average, they'll have average moral character. And then as soon as you give them power, their moral character will no longer be average, it will be below average because they'll become megalomaniacs. Would you say that our government's out of control, Randy? I would say so. Okay, then that kind of negates all of your arguments for pro-government. Well, well, there, there's some, they're not totally out of control. There's, there's a lot of factions that are, it, it's a balance. Yeah, we are, our freedoms are hanging by How can thread. you be not totally out of control? Either you're in control or you're out of control. It's like being, oh, my wife is kind of pregnant. Did you know that? You guys, you guys know my wife, right? You, you've seen her lately. Hey, you should have done a better job, Steve. She, she's only, she's only sort of pregnant right now. I, I, I mean, either you're in control or you're out of control, Randy. Which is it? Well, when I'm driving down the road on an icy highway, uh, uh, it, I'm, it's it's right on the on the ragged edge, you know. Sometimes, and I I like that. It's kind of fun to drive on an Randy, icy. Randy, you're highway. talking about the oppression of peoples. Please don't refer that back to a road. Oh, okay. Well, the fact is, is we have some terrible laws, oppressive laws in this country. Enforced still... by the police that you just advocated for. I, well, what I'm saying is we have no we have no alternative if we magically. Uh, destroyed all the government. You know, they disappeared. They all went home or whatever. Buildings were leveled and everything. No, 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 yeah. no, no. That's destructive, Randy. Well, no one, I mean, no one advocates destructive. Also, no, no one here is advocating for violence or for destruction. Also, Randy. also, that's only no coming one, from the Republicans. No Let's one's burn every building down, Dave. No, right. no one's advocating that uh, that all these institutions would go home, right? And that the traffic lights would shut off, and that the the fire hydrants wouldn't work, and everything like that. No, I'm not the, talking what about what that. I'm talking? Talk yes, no, you're you're mistaking what I'm talking about, Randy. Oh, what I'm talking about is the resources. Instead of stealing from people and giving those resources to other people. Just leave them in the hands of the people who manage and control them now, right? Uh, why couldn't why couldn't all these institutions be funded voluntarily? If we're funding them now at great inefficiency through this through this despicable method of of taxation and redistribution, why not just fund them voluntarily, like every single other service that's provided in the entire world? It would cost much less to provide the same services. You'd still have police, fire roads, you'd still have traffic lights and all the other stuff. It would just cost a whole bunch less, and people would get what they ask for instead of what they're forced to have. Uh, well, some things can be funded voluntarily, that's fine, but who, who's going to set up the courts and the police? There's actually a lot of uh, there's a lot of precedent for that. Um, the most recent precedent in Somalia in 1990. Two or ninety-three, when their government fell apart, there were there were these guerrilla factions who were operating near the near the borders, right? And they were they were basically uh, you know land-based pirates. They were taking over shipments and things like that. So when when the government fell apart and stopped uh, inefficiently trying to run guerrilla blockades and whatnot, these people who were you know sort of nominally private security, they had to serve the market. They had to go into the cities and find customers. And so it actually transformed a a bunch of rebels and a bunch of you know rogue uh, jurisdictions, I guess, into competing court jurisdictions. And so there's there's actually uh, free market courts, so to speak, and free market uh, security services there that are far more effective than anything that existed before. Our our imagination or our lack of imagination limits us to only imagining the status quo. This is like discussing feudalism 400 years ago, right? Of course, nothing can exist except feudalism. It's what we have now. 
you know, the idea of a Republican government when the when the founders came up with that was was lunacy. Everybody in Europe made fun of it because it was crazy because it was beyond what they could imagine. And so our imagination keeps us trapped in this clearly inferior system by any measure of the imagination. And our court systems from the beginning anyway had nothing to do with what we have today, mm, through these statute mm-hmm. and code laws. Exactly. What they did was they measured all the cases that came before them under the common law. Did you do all that you agreed to do, and have you harmed anybody else? So we're not seeing that in any way, shape, or form. And to keep that from coming out of control, our founders had the foresight and wisdom enough to set us up under the British common law to put a trial of jury by our peers, the judge of the law. And that's not being done. And you see that we have the most people in prison in America of any other two gigantic countries combined. Yeah. Combined. It's not working, Randy. When our population has the the freest country in the world has the most people in prison by two times, there's a problem. More than that terrible police state, China, right? Yeah. China's a terrible police state with less people in jail. And four yeah. times the population. Right. No, Randy, I, I know we, we've kind of filibustered you a little bit in the last couple of minutes. Is there anything that you can say to defend your position? Well, yes, going back to the Somali example that Dave gave, gave I guess what Dave might be advocating is little mini fiefdoms, uh, uh, little tiny governments, neighborhood governments or something. But certainly Somalia is no example to... Uh, Relative to all the other countries around them over the last 20 years, they uh-huh. are blowing them out of the water. Their standard of living, the the lifespan, compared to the other countries that are following the U.N. top-down government model that the United States has, too, they, ha- they have destroyed them in, in rate of development. Now, if we just look at how wealthy they are, we go, oh, yeah, we have more money than everybody else, so America is clearly better. But we're just squandering the wealth that was accumulated during the Industrial Revolution when we actually were relatively free. And so if you just say, oh, Somalians are poor, therefore they're stupid and, and their government sucks, that misses the point that, that when, they, when that burden of this imposed top-down structure that we have and all the other Western nations have, when that went away, their standard of living rose like no other nation around them in the region. So Dave, what kind of government do they have now in Somalia? What's going essentially on? none. They have, Dave, no they have the market. Is that right? Well, I'll have to read up and see what... Yeah, there's actually a Wikipedia entry about it. There's uh, an economist, Ben Powell, who's written extensively on it, and he's actually gone over there and, and done some uh, on-the-ground research, too. So. And, and let, me, let me interject here for just a second. Now, we have uh, on, all of our lines are on hold, so we do need to move on, Randy, okay, to sure. another call. Appreciate Thank that. On. Uh, however, as we move on here, I just want to let the people know who are calling in, we encourage you to do the research yourself. Go online. Go find some books. Do some reading. If you don't know how to read, ask somebody to read it to you. Don't just believe what you hear from the talking heads. That's what the whole point yeah, of this absolutely. is. Absolutely. But reading makes you stupid. Uh, only if you read the wrong books, apparently. Four five eight talk is the number. We move on to the next caller. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, is this, hey, is this me? It might be. Depends on who it is. Uh, it's Roger. Roger, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Well, um, I was thinking about that. Uh, the TSA, you know, they are absolutely um, out of their power. They're, they're above and beyond the power that they should have. Um, and I had a big argument with this, with my about this with my mother-in-law the other day. She was uh, she was saying, "Oh, I don't care uh, if somebody wants to look at me naked, uh, then then you know the joke's on them because it ain't nothing, you know." But I was, I was thinking, but you're not only, and I told her, you're not only giving up your own rights. You're saying it's okay to, to violate the rights of everyone else too in the process. And I've, I've been on the Michael Duke show and on, Steve knows I've been on Problem Corner a lot of times and I get pretty heated about this subject. Um, oh, and and we're I, coming up on the break here, Ran, uh, Roger. Did you have a, a question or a point you wanted to make? You got to do it quick. Yeah, I um I just couldn't believe that there was so little uh, signatures on that uh, on that petition because I I had this conversation with them, a lot of people and sent them down to to sign that petition and I, I just it blew me away when I heard that there was so little amount of 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 support for that. Well, it's, maybe after we insane. purge the Republican Party, then there'll be more signatures. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, let me let me go real quick here to, to, to Josh. Josh, anything you want to say before we hit the news here at the bottom of the hour? 
No, I just appreciate Randy calling in, and I always love it when he calls and puts our feet to the fire and challenges us, and that's good stuff. All right, thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. And uh, we are coming up here on the Fox News at the bottom of the hour. Patriots Lament, of course, is uh, sponsored by Far North Tactical and by uh, Bighorn Enterprises. And we in, and also we want to encourage you to check those guys out and thank them for making this show possible. We're online at KFAR660.com. And uh, give you an opportunity, of course, to check us out uh, right there on the web. You can join us in the chat room. And the number to call if you'd like to get in on the air is 458-TALK. If you're listening in another state, make sure you throw a 907 on it in front. Front. 458-TALK. You've got it on the home for Fox News in Fairbanks, KFAR. Fox News Radio, I'm Brett Larson. New York Yankees shortstop Derek Jeter recorded his 3,000th career hit today. The 3-2. That one's drilled deep to left field. Going back, Joyce. Looking up. See ya. 3,000. History with an exclamation point. Michael Kay making the call on the Yes Network. He's the first player to reach the historic milestone as a Yankee while playing the Tampa Bay Rays. Investigators trying to figure out how Sergeant James Hackamer, an Iraq war vet who lost both his legs in a roadside bomb, was ejected from a roller coaster in upstate New York yesterday. The accident doesn't seem to be from malfunction. The first thing tell right now there was nothing as far as mechanical-wise or anything with the ride that would have caused this accident, so... If people have plans to still come to Darien Lake, I would still tell them to stay with their plans. That's Greg Walker with the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. Fox News, we report, you decide. To the men and women who protect our country, thank you. Fairbanks is listening. Local talk, 660 AM. M. Can you wag? Can you wag? Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here. It's a little bit after uh, the bottom of the hour. Uh, we just heard a top news story, and I, I chose, I thought, appropriate music on the other side here. Uh, wag the dog. What was our top news story today there, Josh? Uh, Derek Jeter's 3,000th hit. That's amazing. Uh, our country's bankrupt on the teetering on collapse, financial collapse in the top story of baseball. The top story is baseball. What, does it remind us of anything, Dave? Yeah, bread and circuses, I think. Bread and circuses. You're making a reference to the, the Roman, Roman Empire. Empire. Yeah. Uh, do you guys think that we are like the Roman Empire and that we are collapsing? I think that we just got to get this thing purged out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. You guys keep making making jokes back to back. I know. Yeah. But. Well, we got to suppress education too and make sure that Dave stops reading. Oh, this is. Yeah, I agree to that. I know you're being tongue in cheek, but in, in all seriousness, the only the only way to I I, I I'm not sure this is reversible. No. I, I, I'm not sure that terminal the first, terminal decline. I don't. I don't think that you know. And I hear a lot of folks who say you know who p- still put their faith and their hope and and everything that they've got their money into party politics. That somehow if we just elect the right person, we're going to change everything. Well, I just wish that the Democrats would have set up the TSA because then the Republicans would want to get rid of it. That's what pisses me off. And I'm not even trying to make it funny right now. <clears throat> and Republicans defend the TSA. I mean, we see it on this show nonstop because the Republicans created it. For crap's sakes, they're violating our most fundamental right. Get your hands off of me. Do not stop me from traveling. What is wrong with people? 